global climate change and its effects on Alaska have been many and varied. For example, over the course of the last 30 years or so, the temperature in Arctic part of Alaska has increased approximately a half a degree Celsius every 10 years. And scientists have reported a noticeable change in the surface vegetation. They have witnessed an increase in the growth of shrubs in the tundra of Arctic Alaska. Having little vegetation, the tundra is a very flat land where a limited number of species of plants can actually grow due to the cold temperatures and low precipitation. The tundra consists of two layers, the top layer, called the active layer, and the second layer, referred to as permafrost. The top active layer stays frozen during the winter and spring, but thaws in the summertime, when the permafrost layer remains frozen all year long, and it's impermeable to water. So it makes sense that the plants that can grow there do not develop deep roots. This partially explains why shrubs can grow and spread in the Arctic environment. Shrubs, being little bushes, are short and low to the ground, so this protects them from the wind and the cold of the Arctic. Now, normally, the permafrost would prevent the growth of plants because they cannot establish roots. But since the shrubs' roots don't grow very deep anyways, the permafrost doesn't impact their growth at all. But the shrubs are growing at increased rates with rising temperatures in Arctic Alaska, and this has confounded climate scientists. You'd think that warmer temperatures would lead to accelerated growth in the vegetation all around. Well, it's not quite so straightforward here. There's been a noticeable climb in the temperature during the winter and spring, but not during the summer, while the increase in growth of shrubs has occurred in the summer. We must ask, why are the shrubs growing at an accelerated rate in the summer when the temperatures are increasing only in the winter and spring? Perhaps it can be attributed to biological processes that take place in the soil during the winter. How? Well, microbes, which are microscopic organisms that live in the soil, allow the soil to have higher nitrogen levels, which plants require to survive. These microbes stay fairly active in the winter, and the reason for this is twofold. The first reason is that the microbes reside in the top active layer, which holds water that doesn't get into the permafrost. The second reason is that most of the Arctic's precipitation is in the form of snow, which covers the ground in the winter and has an insulating effect on the soil below it. This ensures that the soil below stays warm enough for the microbes to remain active. Thus, over the course of the winter, the production of nutrients spikes, and this whole process has caused the increased growth of the shrubs in the summer and their expansion in the tundra. The largest increase in shrub growth correlates with these areas that are more nutrient-rich. Okay, but when the snow melts during spring runoff, will the nutrients not get washed away? I thought the spring thaw washed away the soil. You see, most of the soil often stays frozen during peak runoff time, and the nutrients stay deep in the active layer. They're not up at the top near the surface, which is the part of the active layer that's affected most by the runoff. Anyways, there's more to it. Snow gets trapped by the shrubs when it's blown around by the wind, as the tundra is very windy. This causes deep drifts to surround the shrubs, of course, this means that the insulating effect of the snow is greater where this occurs, so it keeps these areas warmer, which causes increased microbial activity. And of course, as mentioned, more microbial activity means more food and nutrients for the shrubs, which leads to more shrub growth. And then more snow accumulates around them, and so on. It's a cycle, a biological loop. And it seems that the tundra is transforming into a shrubland due to this cycle, which is brought on by higher temperatures in winter and spring. So will it stay like this for a long time? Won't the shrub stop and it'll turn back into tundra? I'd like to say so, but there are cases of shrub expansion in other environments, such as semi-arid grassland and tall grass prairies. 
and it appears that the expansion in these areas does continue, almost to the extent of creating a major change. It seems that shrubland survives and thrives after it establishes itself, especially in the Arctic, because these particular shrubs take advantage of nutrient-rich soil better than any other Arctic plants.